Upside Down Pear and Ginger Tart is an absolute winner at the restaurant and it's perfect for when the weather starts to cool down, the pears are nice and ripe and coming through. So let's get into it. First we're gonna, we're gonna use our favorite uh, 28 centimeter tarts in with a removable base. So there it is here. Just need one big sheet of greaseproof paper, sit it on top, tighten that up like that. So you can use a tiny bit of butter just to dab around the edge. This is not a tart that's going to jump a lot, it's not like a sponge cake, but it is an absolute beauty. In like that, we're all good, so there we go. This recipe calls for either really ripe pears, like sometimes you'll have those pears sitting in your fruit bowl. If that pear is letting juice and dribble down your chin, those are the pears you want to use from raw. Otherwise, poached pears are the way forward. Maybe once a year I'll preserve a few pears, usually because my mum's giving me a bit of a hard time for not doing it. Uh, but it's such a good thing to have in the cupboard. They last for uh, two, three years easy, and they're just super good to have handy. Just gonna open it up with a knife and we're just gonna strain this off. Now the reason why we wanna drain these pears, if they're poached pears or bottled pears, they have to be drained, otherwise you won't get that nice caramel. Uh, Cause later on we're gonna flip the whole tart over, you're gonna see the pears on top, and you want that butter and brown sugar that's been creamed up and made really nice and light and fluffy, that's gonna turn to like a self-sourcing caramel on top. And if there's too much liquid on there, it just won't happen. And we're gonna need about six nice big ripe pears, depending on the size. Just gonna let that drizzle through. Now we'll start to cream our brown sugar and butter. That's 340 grams of soft brown sugar and 150 grams of butter. And the butter needs to be a nice, really soft room temperature. This will need about five minutes. So you want it to be nice, light, pale, um, a little bit fluffy and it won't do that straight away. So now that we've got it mixed together, I'm gonna to put it on high speed and beat the heck out of it for five minutes. Just while this is mixing away, uh, we'll just quickly uh, sift the dry ingredients together. So we've got 330 grams of caster sugar. Just gonna throw that in the bottom. I'm just gonna sift the flour because the caster sugar is quite fine um, and that doesn't need to go through it. Uh, 275 grams of just plain flour. We've got one and a half teaspoons of our good friends mixed spice, cinnamon, and our ground ginger. And I've got a wee bit of uh, baking powder, three teaspoons, so that can go in there. Just gonna sieve this together. So we've got 130 mils of milk. This is just full cream milk. And we've got three eggs. We've got a teaspoon of vanilla. This is um, pure vanilla extract. And we're just gonna whisk this together. Just wanna bring the eggs together. Cool, so the eggs and milk is ready to go. So we've got quite a bit of ginger here. We've got about 150 grams of crystallized ginger. Uh, you can use glacé ginger, that's fine. Just gonna slice this up nice and thin. And the melted butter I've just got to my right is 180 grams. Okay, ginger's ready. Just gonna, oopsie. Just gonna pour my butter into there. In she goes. She just throw that into there. Doesn't actually matter where you add your ginger. Just pop it in there, keep it out of the way. Just make a little well. And whenever you wanna make a, a batter, you really want to whisk a lot of egg into a little bit of flour and then work your way around. Otherwise it's gonna go lumpy. And at this stage it's looking quite um, like there's no way that that's gonna turn into a batter, but persevere. Good for your guns, good for your muscles. At this stage we wanna come around the edge. We don't spill too much. There we go. That's all we need to do. So this is our batter that's gonna go on top of our pears. So we're just gonna grab the creamed brown sugar. And it's not actually imperative that it's crazy fluffy. Uh, it's just a lovely pale color. Yeah. We're gonna bring this over. And we're just gonna drop this in. Just gonna spread it out with the back of the spoon. We're just gonna just go back and forth. Doesn't have to be perfect. So these are my pears. So I've actually taken them out. And what we're gonna do is put the round side down. So these pears, when, when they were poached, they've just been cut into quarters. You want the rounded edge pressed into it, and you wanna put the, the wide end at the back. So the, they all face inwards. So the points wanna be facing inwards, and that allows for the fact that when you spread them out, they'll be nice and even, and they'll look beautiful. You wanna pack them quite tight, so right next to each other. They've been good friends in the bottle and on the tree. So making good friends in the tin. Okay, so we've spread it all around. This is just gonna pour straight on top. Fantastic. And you can see that it's all just spreading out naturally. I'm just gonna naturally 
give it a little bit of a move over top until all the pears are covered. And there we go. Ready for the oven. And it's gonna take an hour and a half. So this has had about 40, 45 minutes. And just giving it a wee shake there. You can see it ripple. So because it's rippling like that, it still needs another 45 minutes easy. All right, so we've had a wee bit of a check of this a few times. It's actually been about nearly an hour 40. But don't worry about that. This is ready to go. And what we want to do is just go in here with a little sharp knife. We want that batter to cook all the way through till it's a nice cake crumb. Um, but like I say, the crust is quite firm. You pull that back out, you'll think that it's, um, it's cooked and it may not be. So you actually want to kind of chip a bit of a hole into it and have a look. And purists would say that's a terrible thing to do, but we're going to flip this cake over top. No one's going to know the difference. Open that up. I'm actually pulling my knife about a centimetre because it's a bit dark. And yeah, it's all, it's all cooked in there. I mean, the knife is clean. But the knife being clean doesn't mean everything. We're gonna let this cool down for about half an hour at least, and then we get to flip it out and have a wee look. So we'll see you soon. So it's been half an hour. The cake's cooled down. It's still a little bit warm, and um, we're ready to take it out. And I can release this. I'm just gonna grab a plate. This is where things get interesting. So you want to put your plate on there like that. And this is another reason why you don't want to do this when it's, um, when it's hot, because you imagine hot uh, pears and caramel sauce and you're trying to flip it and it gets on your arm, it's, it's going to burn you. And actually, you can do it from the actual tray. I'm just going to come underneath. Now the crust is quite firm. So we're going to flip that over like that. So I've got it onto the cake platter or plate that I want to serve it on. I'm going to lift that off. And here we go, the moment of truth. Look at that, fantastic. That's actually perfect. And it's still this beautiful temperature. Yeah, that's perfect. That's about as good as you're going to get. Let's rip into it. Oh, the beautiful thing is that crust has actually got a beautiful and nice bit of texture. Now I'm just going to open it up and look at that, that's incredible. So you can eat this just like this um, straight away, a uh, bit of vanilla ice cream, uh, gingerbread ice cream is even better. And like I say, this is the perfect cake. Bang on, enjoy.